Grids, 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 and guys. You guys have asked me before if there was one that basically fits all of it. <laughs> of course not, but that's crazy. Just kidding, I have something for you guys. Let's check it out. About two weeks ago, I got somebody that DM me what they created with my layout and I absolutely loved it. So if you guys would like to, please send me that by email, by Instagram. I love seeing it. Uh, if you guys learned something from my layout or just took inspiration from it, created something cool, I would love to see it. Send that over and man, I'd be so happy. Okay, so today we're really talking about two different types of grids that fits any layout that you're working with when you're working with a letter size or A4, since that's the most common size that we see for magazines. Now, diving into InDesign, I'm gonna go ahead and create my document. And in order to actually make the grids show up in your actual design document, Usually we do want to go into the parent pages. So if you go to the pages and you click into the parent, you can create the guides in here. Uh, so if we go to layout and go to create guides, the first one I'm gonna show you guys is a five by seven. And a five by seven is my personal favorite. Now it has some pros and cons, which I'll go over at the end after I show you guys what it looks like, but it's what I use all the time and it makes a really clean layout. So. We're gonna use a seven for the rows since you wanna match the longer dimension with the bigger number. And then you wanna match the five to whichever one is the shorter dimension. Okay, now the next option we have is the gutter. So for this layout, I actually like to turn the gutter on a little bit lower, just so the images and the text has a closer relationship. Now, since this layout is so good at leaving white space, we don't have to worry about the little gutters. Uh, but you can see in the other layout, this method will not work as well. Okay, next option is to fit the guides to the margin or the page. Now, this might not seem super significant, but it's actually very important. And I'll show you guys the two ways that I lay out the five by seven. One fit to margin, one fit to page, and you guys tell me if you can see the difference. So for this one, I'm gonna use fit guides to margin and we're just gonna go back into our page. Okay, so this is our guide, and one of the things that I want to warn you guys about right away is that if you want to do anything that's like centered or in the middle, this is not really the layout for you, and I'll, I'll let you guys know why. If you look at the way that this is divided, we really have five different columns, and five is not a good number for putting anything in the middle or evenly spacing out elements of three. But what it is really good at is having hierarchy on the page. It's really good at accommodating both landscape and portrait photos. And it's also good at giving very nice and ample white space so that your layout looks very nice, clean, modern, contemporary. So you can see here that all of my elements are aligned to a certain element on this page. Even my text belongs to this grid and that's what we're using a grid for. So let me show you guys the other one where the guides are fit to the page rather than the margins. So I'm going up to layouts, create guide and the same thing, seven and five, turn this down a little bit and we're gonna do page this time. So here you can see it's completely different. Uh, on the top, if I go ahead and delete all this, on the top you have the grids aligning to the margins here and then you have a bunch of white space or just filler space on the outside. That's completely different on this layout where the grid goes completely out and on, onto the page itself. Okay, to show you guys the minor differences between these two, uh, I'm just gonna copy this entire layout all the way down here and I'm gonna paste everything in place. So you might not see anything that is very different, but when I start adjusting these elements, you're gonna see that the bigger images will turn bigger, the smaller images will turn smaller, and everything just has a little bit more room and everything just seems a little bit more prominent on the page. I'll show you guys what I mean. So take a mental note of what you see right here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and adjust everything to align with the grid. Okay, so what do you guys think? Can you tell the differences between number one and number two? I'll put a little before and after over here. To me, the difference really is in what I said before. The bigger images get bigger, the smaller images get smaller. What I do think this really is good for, this type of grid, is if you wanna do any type of full bleed images because the grids balance itself out on the page to the actual page itself rather than just the margin. So, you can see here, if I drag everything out all the way out onto my bleed mark, 
it actually has a pretty nice organizing principle that makes it fit really well to the entire page rather than just the margins. So if you are doing a lot of different full bleed images and full bleed pages, this might be the one that is right for you rather than having it to the margins. Now, although I said that this grid will fit basically everything, there are still some times where you might need to break the grid. And I'll show you guys an example. So let's say that my composition is working really well. I don't have another picture right here. I wanna put in some text. Now, there isn't really a grid for me to do that unless I try to fit everything into this small text. What we can actually do is just have a text box and we can break the grid so that it's in the middle of these four, sorry, not four, I can't count, <laughs> these nine different grids that are here, right? So if I do a quick preview, that's right in the center of the page and that looks really good. Now, you will have that problem and you will run into that problem a little bit more when you're doing the one that is fit to the page. So if I go ahead and just copy this over and paste it in the same place, you can see that there's not really a clear relationship between the actual text and the grids that I've created. So sometimes when you're breaking the grid, which it'll probably happen a lot more than you think, this one is not as intuitive and might not make a lot of sense as compared to the one before. So all four of these are gonna be on my website so you can see which one you like before you actually go in and create the, the guides. Uh, and if you guys don't have Adobe yet, I would suggest you get it from the link in my description, it is an affiliate link and it helps support the channel. And you get Adobe, which you'll probably need to actually create this thing. So it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, so the next one is the six by eight and I'm gonna create my guides right here. Layout, create guides. And we're going to do the same idea. So eight rows and we're gonna do six different columns. So it's gonna give something like this. We're gonna start with the fit guides to margins first. With this one, we don't wanna change the gutters because we want as much space between the different guides as possible, simply just because we have more blocks that are on the page. So let me go ahead and click okay. Now you can go ahead and populate your images and your text however you want. So we have the same kind of idea, big picture on the left with some text, uh, collage of images on the right. Now you can see that this one is a lot more orderly, if you will. There's a lot less of a direct hierarchy that's going on on the page, uh, but everything looks very neat and very organized, just like the other ones. Uh, we have the nice margins or the gutters between the images to delineate between them. And so this really is one that I would use if you want to have a colonnade of images like I have on the top here or if you just want to lay images out in a series, right? We can have images in a series like this. So if you want to have these images in a grid, you want some order and everything, you want them to all look like one piece but separated, then the six by eight is probably the best bet for you. And similar with the other one, if you use this and you align it to the outside of the page, then it's probably a good idea to use that for things like full bleed images. Let me show you guys what happens if I drag this out when it's not aligned to the outside of the page, but rather the margins. And I'll show you guys what happens when you actually have it aligned to the outside of the page. You can see that if I simply drag my images out, one of them, the middle one, will end up being a lot smaller than the two on the either side. If that's what you're trying to go for, then that's perfect. But usually that's not what people are trying to go for. Now, if I go ahead and duplicate this spread, and I'm going to just create my guides. Same thing, we're gonna do eight by six, and we're gonna align this to the page, and I'm just gonna remove the existing ruler there. And then I'll adjust everything so that it fits on the page. You can see that it just works so much better for any full bleed images. All of these guys are the same size and they look like they belong on this page. So this is the six by eight. So I think it's a good idea to just do a nice summary. We went over four layouts and the first one is a five by seven grid aligned to the margins. Second one is five by seven grid aligned to the page. Then we have the six by eight aligned to margin and the six by eight aligned to page. So all four of these are super versatile and works for any layouts. You just drag your elements on the page and it should come out to be fairly clean when you do it. But my favorite is personally the five by seven uh, aligned to the margins. And that's just because it produces a overall clean look. It has a nice hierarchy structure to it. 
and the lack of a balance on the page is something that I prefer when I create images. Now, remember the main thing between aligning to the margins and aligning to the page is that when you align to the page, it makes it a lot easier to do these full bleed images. So if you're trying to do any full bleed uh, or giant image layouts, it might be good for you to use the full bleed layouts, especially if you have multiple full bleed images on the same page. So if you do need a comparison, I've put these up on my website. You can take a look side by side to see which one you like before proceeding with any one of these. But with any one of these, it's a lot better to have a grid than to not have a grid. So any of these would work, probably make your layout look pretty clean. Now, with that said, that's all I have for you guys for today. If you guys like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And let me know which one was your favorite. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.